I do think it's important not to leave this discussion thinking that that the, the sort of set view coming from Dan is uh, the neuroscience the neuroscientific arguments against fail because they're philosophically naive and free will is really important politically and culturally therefore we should be compatibilists right in addition there's this other big piece in there Dan has a theory of the conscious volitional human being right and and, and which is designed among other things to be a uh, a sort of explanation sketch for how evolution produced it and how it computes, that how its brain produces its mind um, and how its brain in interaction with the environment produces uh, meaningful self-narratives and produces selves of the kind that can be authors of their own activity. So all that stuff's really quite important too, right? If, if we had no story like that, we'd be much more worried. Somebody wrote a paper recently, somebody wrote a book recently called My Brain Made Me Do It. <laughs> <laughs> now, you take a deep That's breath and think about yeah. this. What else would you want to make you do it? <laughs> but, but more seriously, there are ways your brain could make you do it, and then there are other ways your brain could make you do it. And the trick is, which kind of way is it? The, the intermediate theory that Don is talking about is the one which takes on that challenge and says, if this is how your brain makes you do it, you're responsible, that you're a morally competent individual. Those, that's what we all want to be true of ourselves. And guess what, folks? It's possible. It, we can be wired right. Well, if guess, your brain made you do it in some other way, then you're wired wrong, and then you aren't responsible. Well, I don't think there's different ways your brain makes you do it. I, I mean, maybe this is radical, but it, substantively, I don't think there's any difference between somebody killing somebody or being a pedophile because they have a brain tumor, or somebody killing somebody because they were beaten up as a kid, which affected their neurons in such a way that they had no choice but to be angry and go out and kill somebody. Well, and, and, I, that, and why seamlessly... <laughs> Well, all and, levels of human all, and, 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 and so also with also with the person who uh, who decides uh, to commit a crime and then commits a murder to cover the crime when he just simply thought he could get away with it. You don't think there's any difference with that brain? Either? I don't. Jerry, so, so it's interesting you put it that way because and I, I, I have encountered that often this argument that for all effective purposes there is no this, no substantive distinction between somebody committing murder because of the brain tumor and something somebody committing murder because you know you wanted your cash or whatever it is right because of the but the that to me is right right of course there is a there is a causal story to be told there but again um, it seems to me first two two things first of all if you take seriously the idea that the human brain is a uh, organ to make decisions then the situations actually are different. There are different inputs into the brain, there are different circumstances. The brain elaborates that, that information differently. And in one case, there's more constraints imposed, like the tumor, there's more constraints imposed in that brain. The brain is malfunctioning. And so one of the things that I really am puzzled often by, by that, the, the brain tumor argument is that the brain tumor is clearly a case where I think most of us would agree the brain is not working properly. It's, it's wired up wrongly. And so that, that case cannot possibly be uh, representative, I think, of a general, the general way. What trauma then? Well, so uh, that's an interesting one. So I was just thinking when you, you mentioned that. So the case of uh, childhood trauma, I'm, I'm making stuff as I go at the moment, but, but surely some neurobiologists could, could back this up. That one might be intermediate. That might be a situation where the, the constraints imposed on your brain are going to be less than the tumor. But, but more than a normal person well, who grew up with. I don't know what a normal with. brain is. I mean, we all have causes for what we do. I mean, my view is that causes, there's a responsibility. Yes, but there's, there's a curve. There is a, there is a bell curve. So you, your tumor is over here. And, you know, your incredibly good education, nurturing environment, everything that's going out is, well, is over there. And then there's the rest of us. And yeah.